Today, I'm really excited. I'm joined by Brian, who is an articling student with our law firm in the Ontario office. Brian, thanks for being here. Thank you for having me. Why don't you uh, introduce yourself to our audience? I'm Brian Trey. I'm, I'm currently an articling student for Andrew. How did you get your interest in law? Was there a particular experience or a person? You know, it's from reading, you know, reading news and news articles. Well, I said that I'm the first lawyer in my family. Okay. And now here you are, you're, you're articling in a personal injury environment, representing injured people. In law school, what kind of lawyer did you think you were going to pursue or become? First year, like one, I like, like you, you know, you can take all sorts of classes, like criminal contracts towards. Funny enough, I was, I was trying to be a tax lawyer, actually. What, what made it change? At least for me, when I, when I'm, when I'm taking a course, I really want to get to know professors, not only like what their, what their course offering is, but also like what their personality is like, you know? So my tax professor, he, he's a very, very, very nice guy. I was ready to learn from him. I was, I was, I was willing to like, you know, kind of hopefully have him take me at his kind of thing, you know, he unexpectedly passed away, um, at the end of my second term. And then unfortunately after that, that the news of his passing, I, I still took those courses, but it's not the same. Wow. I, I never thought someone could make tax plan. So then what did you do? How did you decide to apply in personal injury law? Very different path. In the time. It's very different. So how did you find your way onto that path? Changing a path midway through law school is not, not the easiest. As I said, I, I took all these courses ready to become a tax lawyer, you know. In my third year, I really looked at what are some courses that I'm actually good at, you know, negotiations, like tort law. And then fortunately, I, f- I found, uh, found your firm and then, and then I applied. Have you found, though, that despite, like, the subject is very different, tax and personal injury, did you develop any skills or concentrating on tax law that you still look to that that's actually helped you in the practice of personal injury? Reading tax cases and tax law, like the Income Tax Act, that's not the most fun. So I've kind of developed a skill where I can grind, grind out reading, dense documents. So add attention to detail because tax law is all about, it. I would imagine, it's all about the details. So that translates over well to personal injury law. Well, yes. And this, and another thing too, I, I realized that most of the cases I like reading about are personal injury cases, like tort, tort cases. Those are the, those are the ones that I'm interested in. For anyone that might be watching and, and wondering, because we, we introduced you as an articling student, just explain to us, you know, what articling is in the context of becoming a lawyer. Articling is sort of an apprenticeship. It, it happens after you complete a law school. So after my, my three years at Queens, where I graduated, got the diploma, I'm not yet a lawyer. I need to f- fulfill articling, which is an eight to 10 month process, and really learn how to practice law, as well as completing the bar exam. I, I will say, though, for, for future, future law students and, and those who are going into articling, I, I think it's very, very important that you don't just go to a firm because you, you like the name or because of the area of law. Like the, the mentor you get, that's, in my opinion, that, that's the most important, like who you're learning from. It's a very important step from going to law school and becoming a lawyer. Like it's, it's a crucial, that's a crucial time. I've been here about six months and, and things I've learned here, it, yes, law school teaches a lot, but it doesn't really teach you about the practice of law. Sure. And you're always learning. We're always learning. It's a never ending process. Yeah. Someone, someone told me that, you know, when you, when you're, when you're in, especially personal injury, you, it's not, you don't learn as much. Yeah. That's not true. You, you are always, there's always nuances and cases. You, there's always things to learn about. How long is the articling process? In Ontario, I believe it's eight to 10 months. I know before, because of, all, because of COVID and, and, uh, the pandemic, it was, they had some modified, length i'm not quite sure what that is but it, now it's eight to ten months all right and then what happens after you complete articling and then you pass the bar exam then you're called to the bar so called to the bar essentially means that you get sworn in and then not, that you're you're a fully licensed lawyer so ultimately do you want to be the do you want to be a trial lawyer ultimately i'll be a trial lawyer why 
I like the aspect where I can try to convince a jury or at least try to present to a jury how this person was. I, I, I like I like talking about that. It's nice not to be sitting behind the desk just reading. Where oh, there, there is that. There, there is that. There is that as well. There's the excitement of being in the. There is it. There. It's undeniable. What made you choose us for your articling? Well, you've picked me, tech me, but we picked each other. But yeah. but from your perspective, what made you interested? The, the team here, just to get to know you, Colton, and then as as now I got to know the clerks and paralegals. How I view it is that. Lawyers play a role. Law clerks play a role. Apparently, they all we all play a role in this game, in this system. Every day when I come in here, I'm grateful for that. I think we have the best team. But let's talk a little bit about the day in the life of an articling student. When you walked into it, probably didn't know what to expect. What's a day look like? Each day is a little different. Um, like mostly, you know, I could be attending discoveries one day or attending hearings by Zoom. It, it really just depends on where we're at at a certain case. And like I said. Early on, it's it's different when this reading, trying to um, draft a memorandum for a fictional case. But when you're actually seeing what your work does and how it impacts real people, that that for me is the most enjoyable part. What I really want to start doing more is, um, well, trial obviously, but negotiations. Okay, good. Like learning how to, how this is um, the process of it. I'm still learning. I'm still learning. What's an interesting fact about you that people probably wouldn't know? Interesting fact. Tax guy, turned personal injury. I'm a pretty big golfer. My third year, I played in the Queens golf team, so that was a, that was a nice experience. That's your passion outside of law. I, I think it's important to have a balance. Like, one thing that really stood out, like, I don't want to, I'm not going to list them individually, but every team member you have here, like, they're, they're really talented outside of work. Like, um, you have a law clerk here that that is an elite weightlifter. Like he competes in Ontario. Each team member, like they're, they're very unique in their own way. They have very unique characteristics that there's never a dull day here. Let's put it that way. There's never a dull day here. And now that we know you love golf so much, I think he, I'm thinking when the weather in the spring or the summer, we might do a golf outing. Do you think that the experience of going through articling is actually preparing you? To practice as a lawyer? Absolutely. We can do as many simulations as you want. There, there's nothing like when you have a client, when you have a defense counsel. There's there's nothing that's up to that. Reading on the screen is different, but when I actually can see see the person, talk to the person, really, it, it really opens eyes. The practice of law is so broad and so diverse. And, and there's a lot at stake. There's a lot at stake. And, you know, as much as it's three years of law school, there's only so much they can teach you. Mm -hmm. You do have to go out and, and kind of practice and practice with someone that has some experience. Again, it's, it's, it's the person you're, you're, you're learning from too. The interesting thing is I've never been an articling student because my practice started in the U.S. and I had no articling, first in Michigan, then in Florida. But I had mentors and I was an associate lawyer. A lot of what you're describing or what I see you going through as an articling student is pretty similar to to what I went through anyway without the official designation. Before you started our thing, were there any kind of myths or uh, thoughts that you had about the articling process? I can't, I, to be honest, I can't say I had any, although I must say I, I was genuinely surprised when I, I thought I had my own office. Yeah, were you? Yeah, I was, oh, that's, that's quite nice. I got that, <laughs> a little office here. So that was, that was a nice, uh, that was a nice surprise. There's, I don't want to say no expectation, but I was, I was coming with the open mind. So what do you see yourself in the future <laughs> beyond articling? Well, well, hopefully I can get hired back here. That's the, that was the long, uh, long-term plan. Yeah. Do you see yourself staying in personal injury law? I do. I think I can relate the most to personal injury. When I could see everything being, being put in motion, I could see this isn't some fictional case. This is, this is someone's life. I can give a voice to those who, who genuinely need help. Did you have any preconceived notions about uh, this area of law? Absolutely. Absolutely. People always think if you get into a minor car accident, you know, you can get paid a million dollars. That's not the case. A lot of, a lot of the cases that I've been dealing with, I remember the first time it was, uh, it was this lady and she, she snapped her femur in a car accident. Reading that case and, and reading the medicals, I was a little distraught at first. You know, I, I was quite, it, it got me a little emotional just thinking about this is, this is someone's life. Like she, 
she is the one that's dealing with it every day. That's one thing I like to, um, I wish people, more people would know about is that, yes, there might be cases where, where someone exaggerates, but there's an insurance company on, on the other side. Like you have to convince them to, to put up a dollar amount. They're only putting a dollar amount because they see exposure in this case. It's a little frustrating sometimes when, when I, I hear things like, oh, there, there's this exaggerating. Well, you know, I've read the medicals. I've, I've read their, their, I've read their clinical notes and records. I've seen how many times they visit in doctors. You don't win a lottery just by, like nobody wants to get hit by a car. Of course, a lot of people think personal injury is a lottery. And in fact, once you get in this area of law and you realize how the whole system is stacked, greatly in favor of the insurance company and against the victim. No amount of money ever really restores somebody to where they were before a serious injury or accident. Yes, that, that that's one thing too. Um I, I don't I didn't want to go too too deep into like the us versus the big corporation, but if we're not half capable, then like who is? Like what you said early on, like I need to believe the case. Oh, that's absolutely. If you don't believe in a case, you need to get off it. Yeah. There's nothing worse. Yeah. It's so obvious. All right. So you you mentioned some of the tasks that you do as an articling student. Take us through the sort of what you do to get yourself ready to to write the mediation memo. Well, I started the discovery notes, get a general understanding of what this case is about. Then I can start getting into the details of the, of the medical records. So then I start calling through the medical records. All the expert records... Yeah. If any expert reports have been filed on, on both sides, first party insurance documents like accident benefits documents, treatment records through there. Share with people how like your job involves other people as well. So if I'm missing if I'm missing specific documents, records and whatnot, fortunately we have law clerks that can help us by reaching out to certain providers, getting getting the the necessary documents, um, scheduling appointments with witnesses as well. Theoretically, you could do it all by yourself, but it's not really feasible in the grand scheme of things. You mentioned reviewing documents and records, but then you also mentioned witnesses, witness interviews. What, what's that process all about? Interview witnesses is more to get a different perspective, just get someone who may be a family member, a friend, or boss to just kind of explain what they've seen, the changes they've seen of, of of the person over the years. When you start hearing other people talk about it that corroborates how the injury has affected them, then it, it does, there's much more value in that. It, it's much more convincing to, not just the defense, but the case where trial, it's much more convincing to the jury. What do you enjoy more, combing through medical records and other documents or being there with someone asking questions and... <laughs> yeah, definitely the latter. That's also one thing too, is that combing through the medical, like reading the medical records, you start to realize it's also a different language. That's true because the medical records are more uh, sterile in a way to give you an objective finding, an assessment plan. But then, you, you know, dovetailing that with, okay, this person is off work or on modified duties, right? Maybe that's, that's contained in the medical records, but now why don't you talk to a coworker who can shed light on what that meant, how that person's rule in their place of employment actually changed. So Brian, you're pretty close to having completed your articling term. Now you have the benefit of looking back. What advice would you give somebody who's either about to start articling or just at the beginning of their articling term? What advice would you give that? Yeah, I, I think you should really use this opportunity this, uh, that's eight to 10 months just to really learn the area of law that you're articling in. Just always be curious. For example, when I'm writing a mediation memorandum, why am I doing it? Why is it important? So what, when you start asking yourself these questions, you start to really understand the value of what you're doing. So I think that that's quite important. That's a that's a great point. I think I'll just add to that. I think it's a responsibility too to be a, an articling principal mm. that that I don't take lightly. It really is a privilege. You're, you're you're bringing someone on. You want them to have a good experience, a good introduction into the practice of law. But also, I would suggest ask questions. Mm -hmm. You can, you can get out of it as much as you want to get out of it. You, you nailed it. Like, be curious. Ask questions. Ask to participate in certain things because as much as the articling principle has good intentions and wants you to get the most out of your articling, 
also the practice of law, the demands of the, of the profession, as you know, is a demanding profession. So, you know, one thing I'll say about you, Brian, is like, you've always been curious. I, I enjoy like your questions. I think they're thoughtful questions. I could have completed Arkling just by doing what I've been told, you know, without, without thinking about what's the value of it. I could have just easily done that. And, and it's, you always ask questions. I maybe ask too many questions. No, that's great. <laughs> it's great. I think it's great. I ask too many questions. Think of it. But what are some key takeaways about you, your personal or professional development since you've been articling with us? Understanding, again, the, I don't want to keep bringing it back to it, but understanding the purpose of your work inherently as you do more and more and more, you're going to get better at it. Like it just, it's a, it's a matter of how much better you get at it. It's hard for me to see the change, you know, as a student as well. You know, what, what are some changes you, you've seen over the over past six months? Okay. Let's start with the obvious. When you first started, you came in every day with a, a tie on. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Okay. You got a little more casual. Okay. A tie for okay. sure. Okay. I guess that's a sign of you're just more relaxed, more comfortable in your environment. In terms of your your questions are always good. I think in terms of your ability to take feedback and implement it, mm-hmm. very strong. So I've seen it change for the positive in your your ability to write. Yeah, the quality of your work has, has improved significantly from the beginning. First time he, uh, that, that I had to write a uh, mediation memorandum, you know, I had no idea. Like, I literally didn't know what the... Like, I'm like, I've done something like this in law school, but... You know, let's just let's just try to throw something on paper to see, and then and then, like I said, as you start realizing the value, then your your writing starts to it starts to change. Yeah, same with pleadings. First set of pleadings you drafted, there was a lot of like feedback in terms of changes that needed to be made, revisions. Now, when I review a pleading, uh, something you draft, it's pretty well ready to file at the courthouse. In my time here as an artist, I've really, from the bottom of my heart, I've, I've enjoyed every every moment of it. So, thank you. Yeah, thank you, Brian. We've enjoyed having you, and thanks for being a guest today. It's been great. Thanks.